So Lacoste has just released a never before seen tennis shoe. And Daniel Medvedev is endorsing and really playing in it. Cool. Let's cut it open. Hey, what is up? It's Zach, your YouTube Foot Doctor, and today I've got the performance review and, of course, teardown of the Lacoste AGLT21 Ultra. This shoe has just kind of exploded onto the market, and there has been more talk about this shoe than any other shoe that I have reviewed this year, and that is including all the brand new Adidas and Nike. So I could not wait to get this thing on my foot and, of course, tear it open, see what these things are really made of, and, of course, to see if they're worth all the press they've been getting. So let's find out. Now, when taking these shoes out of the box, they did look a little familiar to me. They do have a lot of elements from the Adidas Barricade 9, the Adidas Barricade 18, as well as the old Babolat Pro Pulses, the ones that Roddick first introduced. But the Ultras do have a ton of unique characteristics as well. Just look at the uppers. It really is a Jekyll and Hyde mixture of super durable rubber, as well as really lightweight caged mesh. Because if you look in the high wear areas of the toe box, you do get that really thick rubber reinforcement. However, look at on the medial side, it's just you can see right through it that caged upper as well as the mesh here in the toe box but they do protect it pretty well as well as let the shoe sit kind of higher on the midsole but the two things that stand out to me most about the upper is number one the molded ankle collar that does go up pretty high so you are going to get a really nice seat in the shoe and a lot of compression which is nice but also that same material is in the tongue now i have seen previous padded tongues this year they've been really nice kind of like the blue shield fives from diodora however on these it's that really memory foam type material real dense foam in there so it does give you a much more molded feeling kind of like the collar here but it's just a little bit more low profile which i do like because that also saves weight but does give you a ton of comfort and compression. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, not even a millimeter of damage. This rubber DuraGuard is actually really flexible, so it allows more movement of your toes. However, just because it's flexible doesn't mean it's not strong, because this is just as good as any other durability focus shoe we've seen this year. But before I get to the actual tear down of the midsole, I just want you to see how high this shoe does sit off the ground. As you can see here, these two ponds are connected by this Pebex plate. Now, Pebex is an actual company. It makes a thermopolyurethane or plastic-like substitute that's supposed to be a little bit of a stronger elastomer. What that means is it gives you a little bit more energy return and more strength than just standard thermopolyurethane, which is a lot of the plastic you see in some shoes. Now, Pebex is used by a lot of different shoe companies, including Nike, to make the vapor flies and the alpha flies. As as well as in the GP turbos where it's placed underneath the strobel unit airbag and full length zoom air unit to hold all that material up between that and the outsole of the shoe. But as much of a stack as these shoes look like they have from the outset and how high they sit off the ground, once you actually tear it down, you only have a 2.2 centimeter heel height, but only a 0.7 centimeter heel to toe drop. Now what that means is your midfoot is actually sitting a little bit higher than most other shoes. So that's why it feels like you're sitting higher on a platform on this shoe versus some other shoes. And that's also why these shoes give you a little bit better art sport than some other shoes, because that midfoot is just still sitting a little bit higher. And so if you want to call this trickery because they sure did have me going for a little while or just good engineering, these shoes still did get 31 centimeters on the serve test, which is nothing to sneeze at. So the Lacoste engineers have been able to find a way to get a pretty decent pop out of these shoes while still giving them a smaller stack and still giving you the feeling of being up on a platform. Now, Lacoste did go with Goodyear to make their outsole tread. It is a true all-court herringbone pattern. You do get a little bit more density here under the big toe joint for pivoting and sliding. However, the rest of this shoe is pretty good for hard and clay court, as well as grass and synthetic alike. And on the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds high grit sandpaper, really seeing what those Goodyear tires are made of. One millimeter of damage, which is not the most durable outsole we've seen this year. However, really nothing to sneeze at. And while this new design and tech is really fun to look at and talk about, it really doesn't matter until we find out how they play. So let's hit the courts. Right off the bat, play testing these, you can tell they are not a low to the ground tactile feeling shoe. They definitely change direction really well and have great grip no matter where you are and what position you're in, but the design of them just makes you feel like you're really sitting up pretty high. But for sure, the most striking thing about the Lacoste is how unforgiving the midsole foam is. These are not plush shoes by any means. They are meant to be nimble, stable, and fast, not to protect against heel pain. So although they have lightning quick responsiveness, they will allow more shock through your feet and legs than some other shoes will. 
but whereas these aren't as forgiving in the foam, that Pebex plate does give you a lot of side-to-side -side stability with almost a cradle-like feel. You really feel like your foot is sitting in a harness, which gave me a lot of confidence to kind of throw my body around and not feel like I was going to roll my ankle. And where these shine most is in that first step coming down off the serve. These have an awesome first step burst due to the compressor built into the foam, as well as the energy storage capability of the Pebex. So for someone looking for a quick burst, these are definitely your shoe. And even though these come in at 14.5 ounces for a men's size 10 and a half, they don't feel heavy at all. And it's no surprise I got 14.66 seconds on the suicide test as the midsole really does have some kick. That Pebex plate gives a lot of resonance when running, which really aids in propulsion. And the shoe is just really aerodynamic, leading to a shoe that feels a lot lighter once it's on foot. Now after playing in the AGLT21 Ultras, I will say the fit is really generous. I actually took a chance and went a half size down on these and I'm glad I did because I still had room in the toe box. Typically I'm an 11 and a half 2E on these, I was just an 11 standard on these and I still had room in the toe box. So they will fit medium and wide feet just fine. If you have a medium foot, I actually would go down that half size. If you have a narrow foot, I'm not necessarily sure these shoes are really great for you. And although the Lacoste have surprisingly good arch support, if you're somebody with heel or Achilles pain, I think it's best to avoid these. Now, if you don't suffer from those already, then you're fine, go for it. But if you're somebody that has those heel pain issues, just because the midsole is so dense and unyielding, it's just not gonna give a lot of energy distribution through that, and you might get a little bit more shock through your heel. And if I had to describe Daniel Medvedev's brand new Lacoste shoes in one hyphenated word, it would be stripped down. Lacoste really tried to take everything out of the shoe that they could that would save them weight, but also put enough in here to give you a lot of performance. So this shoe is more like an F1 car versus like a luxury SUV or something you'd see in the suburbs, because this shoe is just not gonna be for someone that wants the ultimate comfort. It's someone that wants to go fast and really get a big explosive first step. And so if you're looking for a competitor or an alternative to the Lacoste, look at the Lotto Mirage 100s. It has a little bit of a better traction on them because it has a one-piece tread on them. The foam is still pretty dense, just like the Lacoste, but you get a little bit more of a stack on it. They're just a little bit faster. The uppers are not as durable as the Lacoste. However, they are still durable enough. But of all the performance characteristics and features that we've tested out on these shoes so far today, the one that really sticks in my mind the most is its price tag. At $175, there are other shoes that are less expensive that frankly play better and have some better materials in them. Now the engineering of the Lacoste is really interesting. That Pebex plate really does give you a lot of cradling and a lot of stability and support. However, at only a 2.2 centimeter heel height, these are going to bottom out a little faster than some other shoes. Even though they are pressure molded EVA, so you are gonna get a little bit more wear out of them per square centimeter, I, they're still just going to bottom out faster than a shoe that's at maybe a 2.6, 2.8, 2.9 centimeter heel height. So you really have to take that into consideration. How long are these shoes going to last you? Now I will say these shoes are great looking. They are super fast, they're really quick and nimble. So if you are looking for a shoe just for ultimate stability, arch support and quickness, yeah, these shoes are great. You're just gonna have to get over that $175 USD price tag as well. And of course, I'd love to know what you have to say about these in the comments down below. Do you think they're worth $175? Let me know down below and let's get the conversation started. And if you want to stay up to the minute on all the brand new tennis shoes coming out this year, I know they're rolling out really fast and furious. Make sure you click into the playlist above and subscribe down below. I'll see you in the next video.